something that uh, I was talking with Frosk about before we jumped into the games today was that she has figured out G2 Esports when it comes to drafting. The first thing they'll always do is prioritize caps, and then they'll go into their bot lane, and they never have to ban away Cassio because they are not afraid to play against it or with it. So you can already see that with uh, Splice being on the red side, they will take the Cassio off the board, and we're expecting, if uh, Frosk's hypothesis is correct, that the first pick will be a champion that Caps can play in mid. That's the thing about it, though. They're actually going to go for the Lucian this time. It has got the, its all way through the pick and ban, but they still pick flex picks. It's just it always seems to be Caps that takes that first flex fix towards the mid But it's lane. also one of those things we talked about. They like to prioritize their bot lane and a strong pick for Caps in the mid. And it's unsurprising that we're seeing it once again. The Lucian pick in for Perks. They're seeing the LeBlanc in for Caps and Frosk right on the money. This is the expectation that she had. Now we're likely going to guarantee some kind of support for Mickey. He had a fantastic Thresh performance yesterday. They could pair it up with the Braum instead. Just give you a little bit more lane dominance. Braum, uh, Braum is banned obviously up. banned away as well. Uh, but instead, they're going to keep Ooh. those flex picks open with the Jace being locked in. But you would just imagine goes in towards the top lane, towards the Aatrox. Yeah, you'd have to assume it goes towards top. Uh, last time we saw Jace from G2, it was played mid by Caps. Actually, their first game of the season, if I recall correctly, alongside the Zoe. And now Splice have a little bit of wondering to do. Do you go towards something like the Alistair, like the Thresh for Norskev and give him a bit of agency down towards the bottom side? Or do you say, well, Ezreal is still on the cards and Ezreal is probably the highest tier AD carry at the moment? Uh, ooh, I think right now they're fine with leaving the amount of AD carry options open. Draven is something that they could consider, but it's not something Kobe traditionally picks. If you want some kind of lane dominance, then he'll usually go for something like the Caitlyn. Kaiser is another champion that he often tailors towards, but I do think that Ezreal could be higher in the priority. Typically, what G2 like to do in this part of the draft is ban away junglers, uh, but given that they are on blue side, their priority might shift because they then can't first pick that jungler, and it would limit their options uh, as the rotation comes around towards them. Well, we are seeing some junglers get removed from the pool. There's the Gragas taken away. We saw yesterday Gragas have huge impacts in the XL game for Kedril. Do wonder where Splice are going to go. As you said, Zussie has been a little bit more impactful in the early game, uh, finding those ganks at the right time and helping Splice get off to early leads in some of the recent matchups. There's a Nocturne ban as well, so a lot of this jungle pool really getting pinched out. Once again, G2 sticking towards their jungle bans. Splice, they're keeping their options open right now. Remember that they do have first pick. You would imagine that Zeus is looking at something like the Sejuani. He could look to take something like the Zac or the Xin Zhao off the board and then lock in that Sejuani for himself. They said he's actually going to move towards the bot lane with the bans. The Thresh being taken off the board away from Mickey. He did have a fantastic performance on it yesterday. I was very impressed with what he was able to do on the champion. And this kind of, to me, implies that they're trying to force G2 onto something like a Morgana or a Braum to handle that Alistair pick. Yeah, that Braum, of course, still banned from the first phase. Why so do I keep saying this? Why do I keep saying this? I think it's because you saw me pick you up and you keep looking at me. It's, it's like, oh, true. Braum. It's definitely Braum over there. <laughs> Morgana is the direction then. I think they're trying to force it. It definitely is. There's the Ezreal ban that we talked about him being such a strong AD carry, but Kobe still has Caitlyn, Kaisa, Sivir, Varus, all things that he has been successful on in the past. I think you, leave, you take your AD carry here if you can and then leave the last pick for... Wow, okay, they're gonna pick Victor. So that is probably a Victor down towards the bottom lane. You would imagine so, but you could put the Victor mid and then send the Rise down towards the bot side of the map. It does surprise me the amount of AP damage that they have because usually when I see a Victor in a composition, it's to compensate for the fact that you have a melee mid and top and so you want some AP damage. And uh, Victor often does very well uh, into uh, AD carry matchups, but he's also quite good into Lucian thanks to the shield that he can provide from his Q and the early trading that he can deal. Uh, we do see the Olaf picked up here for Yankos. The only thing I've realized with the Splice lineup is the Aatrox could be jungle. It is something we've seen before. Maxwell has played it. And so maybe Splice trying to do a little switcheroo on us right at the last moment and put that Aatrox towards the jungle role. There's the Pike for Mickey, something Hillisang made his name on at Worlds last year. Mickey, probably the best mechanical support in the league, will be very happy to have that in his uh, wheelhouse. So a strong early game for G2, pretty much across the board. Very dominant laners, uh, a lot of roaming options with the pike. Uh, and really, they're looking to try and snowball this game. They want to try. They have a very strong two versus two in mid. They have a winning matchup in top, depending on uh, assuming that it is 
Ooh, I think you you got the prediction on the money there, though, Medic. It looks like that Aatrox will be going to the jungle. Shen up against the Jace will definitely not be an easy matchup for the Shen, but the Spirit's Refuge and his early damage will make the laning phase a little bit easier, and he offers some pretty effective global pressure. But you have some very interesting 1-3-1 one one compositions coming out from either side. <laughs> Caps and Perks doing it. No. No, 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 no. Don't no, talk no. about it. Don't talk about it. We still got like <laughs> seven or eight seconds just, before we jump into the I just the change. remember that they were talking so much about how they were considering lane swapping. Oh, they swapped, during they swapped the, the last yeah, moment. Yeah. There we are. Swapped across. So it is but it's also something you got to be moment. careful of. That was a bit of a cheeky swap there from uh, the duo. Okay, so you said the option for 1-3-1 one, one is definitely here for both teams, and G2 wanting to play through the early game, really. You get those lanes ahead, you have pushing lanes, probably in the top, in the mid, you've got a lot of power on that LeBlanc as well. Yes, you certainly do. And uh, LeBlanc, she she is very strong already all stages of the game, especially when you get to that late point, you can dump in, uh, pretty much take an, take an entire chunk of health off, and then get out of there. And immediately the enemy is in a disadvantaged situation, because, oh no, we have no HP to play with. And Lucian, a lot of his power comes from the early to mid game. Jace is also an exceptionally strong split pusher. I just feel like G2 have gotten themselves a lot of options in terms of the early game. And while Splice don't have the same sort of power in the early game, Rise in a split pushing role offers a lot. They have a lot of options to kind of uh, join into fights thanks to the Shen ultimate. And then paired up with the Aatrox as well, they also have pretty solid 2v2 in the mid lane. But in terms of Aatrox versus Olaf in the early game, this isn't a matchup that I've often seen. So I'll be curious to see how things play out against these two teams. We do have to keep our eyes on those junglers. The 2v2 jungle mid has been such a defining factor of the league so far. And Caps and Yanko seem to have had everyone's number. We're going to jump onto the summoners for the first game of the second day of week three here. G2 still undefeated. Splice, having taken a loss to Schalke yesterday, will be wanting to prove they still belong near the top of the table. Looks like we won't see any sneaky early game plays as of yet. Mickey on this pike. I'm really excited to see him play this champion. It's uh, He's the kind of player that I think, to many, isn't someone that stands out. And I think it's difficult when you're on this G2 lineup, but... Uh, his Thresh play yesterday really, really impressed me. I felt like that he did a great job of helping Perks through what was a very difficult lane matchup. He landed so many fantastic hooks during the team fights. And when I spoke to him afterwards, he actually said that he was disappointed in his performance. He felt like he could have done it better. The very classic pro player mentality yeah. of, I can always make it better than what it was. And so he's now on a big playmaker in Pike. I'm looking forward to seeing how early he actually tries to roam. We'll often see a lot of Pikes rushing mobility boots, something that Hillisang would do a lot. And then around level four or five, they actually look to go mid, even without their ultimate, because if they pair themselves up with a jungler and someone like a LeBlanc means that you can have a lot of setup in the mid lane to try and find some kills or maybe get some deep vision in the enemy jungle. Well, Splice will be trying to keep their eyes on those rooms as well. We talked up Xerxes just a little while ago saying that he was kind of stepping forward to more of an early game orientated role for this team. He's the guy that gets them their leads when they do get ahead in the early game. And I think the Aatrox is a pick that can do it. You actually have relatively good gank threat. You've got some CC. You've got a dash to try and close the gap as well. So I'd like to see Xerxes doing something in the early game. Here. I think... Uh... I've been quite impressed with what Zerse has been able to do. One of the main members that uh, stayed with Splice moving into 2019. And at the very beginning of the split, he was very slow, very traditional Splice playstyle. However, over the last two weeks, I do feel that he's been ganking a lot more. He's been a lot more relevant and he's just been very active in terms of early game playmaking. And if he's going to look for anywhere to gank, mid lane is an option. You know that Caps is going to look to play aggressive and you do have some setup with the sh uh, with the Rise. But I also think that you could look to play around top side as well. With the Shen taunt and the damage from the Aatrox and with a Jace that's going to be constantly pushing in, that is another potential lane that he could look to play around. I think the one lane that he wants to try and avoid right now is the bot lane. So just primarily uh, focus on farming and scaling and wave clearing to get through what can be a very difficult matchup, which is the uh, Pike Lush. So as we see the junglers just go through their rotations here, I want to talk a little bit, there's a couple of things that intrigue you in this yeah. game, Vedius, already. We've got the electric healed on Caps into an aftershock from Humanoid. I assume that's just because Caps wants the burst and Humanoid wants to be a little bit more tanky whenever Caps tries to jump on him. Well, I think it's important to remember that uh, Humanoid will, has a relatively short range on the rise. We'll be getting in the thick of things, but keep my eyes on the bot lane as well, because I see a bit of trading going on. Perk's actually taking a pretty devastating trade towards the bot side of the map. Even though he is exuding a lot of pressure, 
It looks like that he wasn't able to win out on that trade. And that was the other thing I wanted to talk about, because Perks has gone Corrupting Potion Lucian first here. We've seen Doran's Ring Lucian with the Ardent Blaze uh, Max in the LCK. We usually see Doran's Blade or Doran's uh, Shield. Haven't seen a Corrupting Potion for a while on the AD carry. So, uh, to me, what this suggests is that Perks wants to spend as much mana pushing the wave as often as possible, and he's not afraid to trade a lot in the lane and try and abuse the fact that Victor is at his weakest at this early stage of laning. And so by going for the Corrupting Pot, it just gives you more sustain during the laning phase to spam out these abilities, keep pushing the lane up, and build a bit more of an advantage uh, during this laning phase. You can see it having the impact as well. He's already back to about three quarters HP after being chunked out earlier on. Of course, running press the attack, not fleet footwork, so can't rely on his keystone to regenerate him in the lane. But to go back to your aftershock question, uh, the thing about Ryze is he has a relatively short range and he can often get to the thick of things. And when you think that he will go for the tier build, which will go into Archangels, you have the shield as well. Ooh, how we may see a potential gank in mid, but also a gank up top lane medic. Uh, it looks like Humanoid just dodges out the mid. Chachi and Xerxes fighting onto Wonder here. Wonder flashes away, but the chase from Xerxes is enough. And that's an easy enough kill onto the Jace. Caps trading onto Humanoid. Doesn't have any mana here. Yankos will land an axe on to Humanoid. Rice flashes in. Can't quite kill Caps. Flashbacks to Caps' first game on the LCS stage there. So this is coming into the mid lane. I don't think he got spotted on that ward. He still has a flash. Yankos has a flash of his own. Caps now decides to back away. He respects the fact that Xerxes could just jump forward. Just going to come into mid lane and help Humanoid push. But we talked about it, Medic. Yep. If Xerxes is going to look to gank anywhere in the early game, it'll either be in the mid lane or the top side of the map. It goes to top lane. The Jace, as we saw, pushing very hard in towards the top side. The Vision wasn't invested in that top lane just yet, which meant that Xerxes saw an opportunity to get in. Now Mickey actually makes his way mid. Will disrupt the base. But Caps hasn't even gone back to base yet. These guys are not giving enough opportunity to talk about the game, Medic. <laughs> well, we are talking about the game. They just keep doing stuff. I mean, that's the roaming potential of something like Pike, though. Yanko's going to get pulled back here. Wonder on his way down. Humanoid can't really react that quickly. He's very low on HP. Has to flash the wall there. Xerxes does get back towards his own jungle. But uh, across the board, this game has been pretty action-packed, considering the fact we only have one kill so far. Charchi jumping away. Yankos flashes forward. Charchi's very tanky already on the Shen. Doesn't have the flash, doesn't have the teleport either, of course, to get back into this fight. And Charchi is just going to go down. Yankos tanks it up. Easy enough kill for G2. Mickey trading onto Norskaren and hit the bottom lane. He's going to get stunned up. Has that great health that he can regenerate. Caught up in the gravity well. Perks chasing forward, ignited, but Norskaren very low, down to 100 HP. Kobe fights away the bottom lane. Rumble comes in in the mid lane as Humanoid looks for the chase. Caps jumps the wall. Zazzy gets the infernal chains, and Caps falls in mid. And Caps had not gone back to base in that entire time since that initial gank from Yankos, meaning that he had no health, no mana, and he gets punished by Xerxes. But Something that the analyst has talked about and something that uh, I love Trevor mentioned, said that he and I talked a lot about was we wanted to see Splice try and match G2 in the early game. Because if you play this slow, methodical style, G2 are just going to run away with the game in the early. But Splicer going pound for pound, Zeus is being active on the map. All the laners are trading back and forth. And right now it is Splice with the kill lead, even though they're at a goal deficit. Let's have another look at Whichever one of the plays <laughs> happened. So we're going to see Caps get punished here. Great Realm Warp, uh, Realm Warp from Humanoid to cut off the escape route of Caps. He's either forced to go back into Humanoid's hands or to get killed by Xerxes. So that was a very easy kill there. And it was just greedy from Caps, overstaying in the lane. And now he's at a massive CS deficit, allowing Humanoid to get a pretty big lead. But remember we talked about how Perks wanted to try and build up a lead during the laning phase? Well, he's done that. He is 65 CS to 39. The goal difference between those two right now is about 700. That is about two kills in the hands of Perks just through superior farming. So that Corrupting Potion definitely paying off for him during the early laning phase. And the power of having pushing lanes to get those turret platings down as well is so important for you. If you don't invest too many resources into pushing the enemy lane away, you get the turret platings, you get the extra gold in your back pocket, and you can see a build water cutlass already finished on perks, only two amplifying to uh, tomes on Kobe. Once again, Caps jumps in onto Humanoid here, lands the Infernal Chains. Humanoid gets the stand united. He'll be alive for the moment. Chachi looking for the chase, waiting for that Ragnarok's part time out. Mickey here. Lots of damage onto Yangsgolz, and Chachi is the one to secure it. Caps can't go back in, and once again, we see Caps going aggressive and Humanoid and Splice coming out on top. G2 are trying to play around the mid lane, try and get Caps ahead, shut Humanoid down, but the Shen ultimate is making it very difficult for them, given that it mitigates so much of the early game damage, and Splice actually get themselves the return kill and are able to shut that gank down. So G2's game plan not coming together at all. 
Very good stuff across the board from Spice. You know, it's very rare that we see G2 pinned back this much. Uh, in the early game, especially Caps 20 farm behind in the mid lane. Of course, there are advantages on the other portions of the map. We talked about Perks being ahead in the uh, bottom lane. Wonder is ahead in the top lane as well, about 10 to 15 CS, depending on the wave's positions. And you can't always rely on Caps. G2 have seemed to play through Caps through most of their games, but you can sometimes forget they have some of the best players in Europe on the rest of their squad as well. And maybe it's their time to step up in this game. Stun lands onto Norse Garen. He doesn't have flash. But Colin comes out as well. There is the damage from Mickey. Wayne That's 2v2 from below. Absolutely beautiful stuff there. Both level six. The setup was clean. Norse Garen didn't have his flash available. And G2's bot lane looking to continue the pressure and showcasing a different performance yesterday. They were in a tough matchup yesterday, but now that they have a stronger two versus two, they're showcasing what they are capable of. Looking for that second turret plating as well. Perks will just dodge away. Plating goes down. Perks gets it all. The uh, bone skewer for Mickey was cancelled with the Chaos Storm. Perks will just be forced away from the wave, but as you say, great stuff from the 2v2 in the bot lane. And that's where a lot of the goal lead is coming from for G2. You'll note that uh, two plates have dropped in the bot side of the map. One plate has dropped up in the top side. There's a lot of extra gold that G2 have been picking up for themselves, and a lot of it is going on to Perks and Wonder, two of the big carries for this team, uh, outside of Caps, of course, who is a little bit behind, but once again, looking for another play in Yeah, Humanoid dodging all ways to Sunday here. Managing to get away from basically everything. Zerse on his way in as well. The Ragnarok makes you less tanky, of course, and Norskaren joins the fight. That's one down. And it seems that every time G2 is trying to do, do, do something through mid, Humanoid just knows exactly what he's doing. Norskaren caught out, flashes away, teleport coming in from Hunoi to get back to this fight. Wow, but G2 committing to trying to get kills in the mid lane. Mickey regularly roaming towards mid. We talked about it at the beginning of the game where on this pike, he's gonna rush the mobility boots and look for options around this mid lane, but they haven't been able to pull anything off. Humanoid, he's had some fancy feet. He's rushed the Merc Treads, and Zeus has been very active as well. Counter ganking, trying to track where Yankos is going in this early game, the Shen ultimate as well. Splice saying that, you know what, G2, we're willing to skirmish you in the early game, and they're doing a fantastic job. The gold is very close, but Perks is right now the scariest member on G2's squad as he continues to extend his lead in the bot lane. About 40 CS up now down towards that bottom side. Uh, I, I really like what we have seen from Xerxes so far this game, being much more proactive on the map, continuing that trend of just spending more time around his teammates in the early game. And I wonder how he's going to be able to translate this because he's carrying all three of his team's kills and he is definitely the one they are pinning their hopes on at the moment. So I can inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Yankos has dropped the pause. Looks like that it is some issue on the G2 side, which will hopefully get resolved very, very soon. But in terms of the game state, after how Splice performed yesterday, I'm not too surprised with how the early game is going. What does surprise me is how regularly that they're actually fighting. Because I think that Splice now have been able to demonstrate in week two and week three that they can play a good early game. I think, again, Zerse is the guy that often makes those early game ganks happen. Uh, however, what I wasn't expecting was Splice to actually just match G2 in terms of skirmishing. And in the mid and top side of the map, I feel like they've been regularly doing it, but it's just the bot side where they've really struggled. And Zerse hasn't been able to impact that side. Uh, Perks and Mickey have really utilized their strong 2v2 to build an advantage. And now Wonder, huge amount of damage coming out from the chase, just knocked Chachi out of the Spirit's Refuge. And now Chachi's underneath this tower. Wonder could just look for the dive, has his flash available if he wants to go for it. Though. Gets the second plate up towards that top lane. There's Kleptomancy Jace doing a lot of work. Hex flash coming in. Norskaren will chase. Cersei with the follow. Phantom Undertow across the wall for Mickey. Gets him back towards his jungle as well. But Cersei's still on the chase and Mickey realizes it. Inferno chase goes down, does not drag him back. But Cersei still has that red buff. The slow comes out, Mickey flashes away. And uh, I can inform you guys the first pause was because Caps accidentally out alt tabbed out of his client. <laughs> we will find out what the second pause is in a second. It won't. I assume it will not be the same issue. It was on G2 side once again. Once we have more information, we will share it with you guys. But yeah, right now Mickey is in a bit of a dangerous spot. He is being chased by Aatrox. Humanoids rise. Did just use his ultimate to kind of come in for the flank, and uh, he's definitely in some dire straits right now. I think the big thing uh, that I have seen so far this game is 
a propensity for Jankos to gank mid lane and Splice to seem to read the play before it even happens. We actually have a replay up of the Shen stand united that allowed Humanoid to escape the last time we saw that gank happen. And you have to give credit to Humanoid who dodges a lot of skill shots here as well, but Splice just seemed to have set up a team that can uh, manage to deal with this G2 pressure. So you're seeing the power of the Aftershock here as well. It gives you a lot of resistances while not losing too much ability power. And then at the same time, you have the Shen ultimate on top of the fact that Ryze gets his own shield from his passive uh, that allows him to just buy enough time for uh, Vizichati to join the fight. And then because G2 are on the retreat, it allows them to turn it into an actual kill advantage. As a note, I said uh, Humanoid dodged a lot of skill shots. He didn't dodge any that skill shots in that replay. There was another yeah. one where he dodged a lot of skill shots. Uh, as a note, Caps' client minimized twice, so we are restarting his PC to rectify that issue. Hopefully ah, it gets okay. solved in just a second. So he didn't alt tap. The client just minimized itself, it would seem. Yep. But if you are spliced now, you're looking at it, you know it's two kills to four. Gold lead slightly in favor of G2, about 400 gold between the two teams. You know your bot lane's quite far behind. You know your top lane is even-ish, but probably struggling a little bit now into that, Jace. We just saw that trade in the top lane. Yes. What are your intentions? Where are you going next? How do you stem the aggressive bleeding that G2 are pushing onto you? Well, right now, I don't think you can. Um, they just, Spice can't generate enough pressure on the map because it's almost like, so think of a sinking ship, right? And there are lots of ho little holes that are just slowly starting to leak in water to the ship. And what Zeus is trying to do is plug as many holes as possible. He's trying to slow down this sinking ship. Um, but G2 are just running around with like a, a hammer and being like, I'm putting a hole here and I'm putting another one here. And he's like, haha, Zeus, you can't keep up. Uh, and it's like Wonder going for that 1v1. He's like, oh, jungle is bot. I'm going for a trade top. He then forces Vizichachi back. And now he's getting more turret plays. He's generating more gold. And then, oh, if Zeus ganks top, well, what, funny enough, we're ganking mid again, you know? And so every time Splice tried to do something or try to answer, G2 are just like, oh, okay, we're going to trade somewhere else yep. on the map. And so right now at the early game, G2 just have the composition that is easy for them to force these kind of a plays. Um, but hopefully, once Splice get a couple of items, it'll be a little bit easier for them to actually trade back. Flash away from Perks, that's it. Looking for the Darkin Blade, doesn't land a chains. Mickey survives underneath the tower as well, and Splice will force the G2 bottom lane away. They don't really give up too much on the rest of the map either, so they'll get a couple of plates here for themselves. That's always, that's kind of the, the gold swing we look at now. It used to be four-man bot, take the tower, and then you'd be able to rotate your bot lane away from that bottom lane. Now it's much more about how many plates can you get down before the 40-minute mark, and how much gold can you put into your back pockets. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it will really help out Kobe as well. Uh, taking some of those plates down, getting a bit of gold back, but also just forcing the flash and heal as well out from perks means that maybe Splice will have some options to play around that bot side. But Zeus is currently sitting at 3 0 0. He has a very big bounty on his head. He has completed his jungle item as well, and he's still the guy I'm looking at to keep Splice in the running so far in this early to mid game. He is now. Rift Herald was just taken by Yankos, so he secured that for G2. They could go towards this top tower, which is about to fall, or they could use it somewhere else to try and take some plates to get that extra gold. Uh, Chachi just struggling a little bit here into Wonder. Will land the taunt. Wonder accepts his fate underneath the tower for the moment. He goes down to about half HP, but then starts regenerating straight away anyway. I remember the G2's comp, they actually have a very effective 1-3-1. Uh, their team fighting is okay. But without any real frontline or reliable engage, they're much better off for trying to force skirmishes, small fights around the map, and utilizing their mobility to, to get picks. And ideally, they want to have a good early game lead mm -hmm. so they can then get deep vision, look for small fights, uh, and take a similar approach to what uh, my types did yesterday. Oh, no scary, trading straight onto Perks. is stun locked up. Perks is just down. 30 CS disadvantage for the Splice bottom lane. They just wipe the Lucian off the map. That was devastating. Look at the face of... Oh, uh, Cavs jumps in as well. He just loses that trade. Humanoid could flash for this. Oh, Doesn't have it, too. so he couldn't. He's just going to force him back. And again, the name of the game is plates right now in the other game. Splice is going to pick up a bunch of plates towards the bot side of the map. Humanoid is going to pick himself up another plate in mid as well. And we're just about to hit the 14-minute mark. So this is the best Perfect time. Perfect time. Perfect time to, to get, get all that place. bit of gold. But here we go. We have Yankos making his way to the bot side. Let's go and pops the ultimate. Yankos on his way down here, as you say. Dodges out from the death from below. Still surviving for the moment. Lands the stunner to make it. That's the stand united as well. He gets killed with the redemption. Redemption taken out by the Redemption Olaf. Not a pretty way to go, but survived for a very long time. Redemption Olaf is something that we've seen over in the LCK. We'll talk a little bit about it in a second, but so much has been happening on the map right now. Caps could be in danger once again. We oh, actually goes back in. Cheeky there from Caps. 
I think that's something you can say a lot of the time <laughs> about Cap. He just makes these plays knowing that he is better than his opponent. He does these things that you can't, you don't expect, because any sane-minded individual probably wouldn't go for the play. First tower goes down mid, though. It's, I think, the first time we've really seen Caps pinned back this hard in the laning phase. He's 40 CS down to Humanoid, and it's not like Yankos hasn't paid him attention. It's just that Splice have read the G2 playbook around that mid lane. Now, Mickey, caught out a little bit by Norskian and Xerxes. Can just chase away as Splice look for the Rift Herald, and G2 get a tower bot, but sacrifice that second Rift Herald charge. All right, so G2 will secure... Wait, did they get the first tower they get? No, they got second. Humanoid got first mid. Right, right, right. Uh, Humanoid's actually making a roam up towards the top side of the map. Caps recognizing it will likely follow him soon. Just out of range here. Caps is on the way, but he's not going to be able to get there anywhere near as quickly as Humanoid with that Realm Warp. Taunt lands. Tower goes down. One to try to trade onto Humanoid here. Flashes away. Humanoid does have a flash to follow if he wants. Caps now coming in. Jumps onto Humanoid. Flash away. The Ignite comes down, and Humanoid tries to get the shield. Manages to get it. Now, Chachi he has to block because Wonder has the accelerated shock blast. Caps not going to chase any further. Good escape from Humanoid. Here's Mickey. Has that death from below. About to come off cooldown, but Xerxes spots him out in the jungle, and Splice is just body blocking for their teammates. This is what I'm saying, G2. Every time you patch one hole up, they try to make a hole elsewhere. But Splice are patching them. Yeah, and this Splice is the thing. Splice have Flexi Seal. <laughs> flex tape, that's the one. They're certainly, and, and they're doing a great job, right? It's, it's such a close game, very back and forth. G2 not building the kind of early lead that they would want, but they're still taking a lot of towers. You can see that uh, the gold gap is closed between Perks and Kobe after they were able to find that kill. Humanoid still sits on a very healthy advantage in the mid lane. And right now, all of the gold advantage sits on Wonder up towards the top side of the map. He pretty much got every single plate in the top lane. Uh, and he got uh, the tower bonus gold as well. And he's sitting at a very healthy farm advantage. So in terms of being able to split push, G2 is still in a fine position. But Splice, they're getting to that scaling point. The fact that Kobe has completed the Lost Chapter as well as his upgraded Hex Core means that he is a lot more relevant in the game right now. Kobe has also fully maxed out his E. He has it upgraded, so now Splice have way more wave clear. It gets harder for G2 to siege. And you'll note, that Humanoid and Vizichachi will be moved off into a side lane and they'll start using the Shen to look for picks. Caps jumps away with the distortion, uses the double distort, can't trade on towards Xerxes. And Caps has so often been the central member of G2, the guy we look at as uh, probably the best player in Europe at the moment. But one start I want to bring your attention to, his combined kills and assists at 15 minutes. He's first, he averages 3.2. This game he has zero. Yes. One death as that well. That is correct, yeah. He, he, uh, G2 did play a lot around him, but he hasn't been able to convert that into any kills. He's actually been in a pretty big deficit this laning phase. And I do just like the way in which Splice have drafted. I think the Shen pick has worked out very nicely for them, not only to mitigate some of the pressure from the Jace, but also to just shut down the fact that G2 tried so hard to snowball around their mid lane. So... But G2 put, sorry. No, no, carry on. I said G2 put so much emphasis on getting this strong mid laner as well. It's the second rotation of their draft. It's something that they often do. Um, but yeah, like, I'm kind of thinking about what are the next steps now for both these teams because Baron is very early, given that he hasn't even spawned yet. And we're now approaching the kind of mid game, which is the 20, 25 minute mark, when you'll have your first, second items completed. And that's usually where you start to see either 3v3 skirmishes or actually full blown team fights. Now, remember, G2's composition is much better at these skirmishes and utilizing their mobility in fights. We actually, speaking of a skirmish, are looking at one in the top lane right now. Mickey has the bone skewer, charges it up, just waits for Chachi to pin himself against the wall. There's the culling as well. Chachi trying to dodge around as much as he can, but the, the death from below will spell his demise. Gap's trying to catch out this wave in the mid lane because he knows Splice want to push in. It's G2 on the top side of the map, and he jumps straight onto Xerxes. Holy moly, that's a lot of damage, but the World Ender comes out just in time. Not going to get too much regeneration from that, but it does land the Shock Blast. And once again, G2 come out of the woodwork and pick up two kills. G2 are finding pick after pick. They're looking for more right now, but they don't have a mid wave, so they're going to have to regain control of the map as Perks continues to push up towards the top side. He has his support roaming through the jungle. He feels safe to keep pushing on this tower, but he won't be able to stay here forever as Norskarin tries to make his way up towards the top side. I always find this with G2 games. It's like, oh, Splice are in a good position, you know? They're a bit ahead in gold. It's about a thousand difference. They seem to be playing to their game plan. And then somehow G2 just miraculously find picks, find kills, and they've done it once again. Humanoid out of position in the top lane, and G2 get their third kill in as many minutes. And if the observers can just kind of pan over the top side of the, uh, the Splice jungle after the replay, we'll see how much vision they actually have. And this is just a really good pick from Caps. Even though he walks into Brush that they know 
captures it. Zerse doesn't respect the burst damage and acknowledge that Mickey is rolling down from the top side of the jungle. So he gets chunked out. And while Zerse does get his ultimate up, he ends up dropping. And I believe that was his first death of the game. He's going to give the shutdown gold now over to Wonder. So that's going to even further perpetuate the bigger gold differential between the two top laners. He's now sitting at about 2,000. And thank you, Observers. They did highlight all the vision that G2 did have, but obviously it's yeah, disappeared. It'd be out by after. the time we got there. Uh, thank you very much, though, Observers, for identifying that for us. But that's how G2 were able to find these picks, find these skirmishes, and um, they'll start to do a lot more of this because now their gold lead is getting bigger and bigger. The gold is on a lot of the strong targets. Ideally, they would have liked a bit more gold onto Caps, but they're not going to complain. Uh, he's still in a fine spot with his Ludens Echo completed, and their Lucian is very strong. Mickey's constantly looking for roams, and Splice, they're just going to look to wave clear and stall for a little bit longer. Rise is definitely a very strong side laner. He's going to get stronger and stronger as the game progresses, especially with the Aftershock. He's very difficult to kill. Um, and Kobe on this Victor. Late game mages are always a threat. They always do so much damage, especially the AoE. Oh, Mickey locked up and silenced the Ignite taking. There's the shutdown. Xerxes secures the kill. And this is the thing, both teams can make these picks. What I would like to see is a little bit more vision control from Splice and a little bit more proactiveness as G2 are making the majority of them. Caps trying to jump around here, Zersi, in the right position at the right time. Doesn't quite land the chains. Caps still has the option to jump across, will get away, and gets the flash across the wall as well. Meanwhile, a turret fell in the mid lane courtesy of Wonder and Perks. So this is the other advantage that G2 have of splitting up the map. So they had Wonder sent down towards the bot lane because he did have his teleport available. So while Vizitachi was handling that, Cats was spinning up towards the top side of the map and Splice tried to catch him out of position. So while they had two, three members moving up towards top, G2 then looked to take another objective elsewhere. So again, it's this constant back and forth of making holes, patching holes, making holes, patching holes. And that does keep the game very, very close. You can see there's only a 300 differential, but we could see him getting caught out once again. Jump straight on him. There's a stand United. Can he survive for long enough for this gen to arrive? Gaps jumps onto the back line, lands the chains, but doesn't get the kill. Death Below comes out from Mickey. Wonder hits the long range shot, but Caps is down as well. It's a 1 4 trade at the moment. Cersei will go into the world ender. Resurrection coming out. Doesn't have the flash. Already used it. That's a great knockback. Dodges to the side. Perks on the chest. Holy! Cersei, no way! No way do you get away from this. Wonder trying to cut him off the pass. Cersei can't quite land the knockup. But now Wonder and Yanko's on the wrong side of this fight. And Splice can chase them in. Norskaya and jumps forward. Chachi here as well. Kobe doesn't have the ultimate, but does have a lot of damage on that Victor. A double taunt. Kobe flashes across the wall as G2. Come in from the side. They're sweeping round. Norskaya knocks away Perks. Kobe already down though. And now there's no damage left for Splice. G2 will clean this one. Up, Chachi lands just short on the taunt, pulled back, Splice get the kill, uh, G2 get the kill, and end up with the ace. Great stuff there from G2, now the teleport comes in, Humanoid has something to say about this, the rookie mid, well out of position, TP to his own death, and Benny as I'm gonna say it, that TP sucked! <laughs> yes, unfortunately it did, Medic, G2 take everything off the back of that fight, and Initially, it was all planned out by Splice. You could see that they were prepared to make a play up towards the top side. And when we jump into the replay, some of the things you need to take a note of is where the positioning of Shen is. He's going back to base on your minimap, and they're primed and ready to collapse onto this. But G2, they have the teleport immediately responded, and four members are already clumped up in this circle much quicker than the rest of Splice are, which means they have a clear numbers advantage, and then the rest of Splice gets separated. So this ends up being a big skirmish that... Uh, Splice are not well equipped to, th uh, to actually take. Now, what they believe is that they can just run through and get the flank in from behind, but then their decision making gets split up and they can't actually turn it into any real kill. So they end up collapsing. And while we were breaking down that replay, another kill comes down in favor of G2. And now they're starting to snowball this game. You Noskaren know, got caught out once again. Have to give credit to Mickey. He's been landing some great bone skewers this game as well. And the ability to, for Caps to jump into the back line and jump back is so, so effective. Splice. Bleeding a little bit. 3,000 gold down. G2 found the fight. They found their G2 moment where they just accelerate the game away from you. And with it, they take a, drag, a dragon. I believe that was a cloud. Equalize that cloud score. This, you have to feel, is the time they opt for the 1 3 1. You put Jason aside, then you have caps roaming around. You can then just slowly suffocate out any. I mean, they can also any just keep looking at kills. I mean, oh, yeah. But you can 1 3 1 <laughs> into kills. Uh, yes. You so, I mean, you can. The G2 have all the options in the world, and they can also just team fight because they have a really healthy gold lead. The Chase is on three items. Lucian is on three items as well. Like uh, G2 have all the options available to them. 
Uh, and Visicharge is now in a lot of trouble. Oh, look. Yeah, <laughs> Twisted is also in a lot of trouble. As well. Has to pop the ultimate caps. We'll just be able to jump away here. The smite came down, so they do know which one is the real one. But three members are going bot right now for Splice. They have to try and answer the pressure that uh, Wonder is generating, which means that G2 can gain priority on mid and top. They also have full vision control around the Baron, but they don't want to start it because they don't have anyone that can tank it, which means that their objective is to either find more kills or try and take oh. some of these out of towers. Humanoid face check straight into Caps. Chains will land. Humanoid takes a cunning to the back, pops the Seraph, there's a shield, he's still alive, and Caps silence, but just about jumps away in time. It actually uh, denies channels, of course. But that fun first fact, one. Wanda sitting on the bottom line once again. The obnoxious playstyle of the 1-3-1 oh. means that Splice are just being spread apart the map. And oh, Pax just opens up. Mickey gets the kill with the death in the low, but Norskaren thought he caught Mickey out underneath the tower. Mickey with a great bone skewer just at the right place to stop Norskaren from getting the headbutt pulverized combo off. And these these skirmish comps can be really difficult to play because they often so rely on getting ahead in the early game and being able to uh, generate pressure all across the map. And ooh, that was very close. And sometimes it's difficult to set that up. And I feel like Splice did a good job of mitigating G2 snowballing and early leads, but the moment G2 get that vision, they just play around it so effectively. They take gambles, they take risks, and every time they see you even slightly overextended, they punish yep. you immediately, and they convert one kill into another, into another, and then they just do not relent. I think something the uh, G2 fans will be pretty happy about is how well they have played without Caps being ahead this game. Humanoid and Xerxes trying to catch out Perks, but he has been a stellar standout member for G2. Xerxes gets the damage down with Perks. Perks still able to survive, dodging around, just about survives at the backline. Perks eventually taken out by the Death Ray, but already two kills. Down for G2. They're looking for a little bit more as Kame steps forward, hits a double for Wonder. Caps locked up underneath the tower, jumps back. He's still alive. Chachi takes him out in the end. Wonder get a ball as well, and Chachi may be able to turn this one around because Sony Yakos Mickey, they will retreat. And in the end, Chachi and Norskaren hold back the tides of the G2 army. It actually ends up being a three for three at the end of the day, which is a great setup for Splice. Maybe more as Mickey's in danger right now. Yeah, Mickey can't just jump, jump across the wall with that phantom undertow, so gets to safety. But holy moly, these fights are close, Vedius. The gold gap once again starting to close. Only 3k is the difference right now. It was 6k before that fight, so Splice picking up a lot of shutdowns off the back of that. So let's have a look exactly how that one played out. So remember that this is just Perks and Yankos versus Zerse and Humanoid. So this is a 2v2 to kick things off. But they, uh, G2 know that the rest of their team is going to get there first. Shen hasn't joined the fight. He immediately TPs in, and now we're in a 3v3 situation. North Scarin is tanking up a lot of the damage, but Perks gets taken out at the beginning of the fight while Kobe is still alive. He's able to dish out consistent damage against both Caps and Wonder, and while he does die, he's done enough to allow Chachi and North Scarin to actually clean up those two members, which means that with only Mickey and Yankos left alive, G2 no longer have any damage because all of their carries are dead. And that was a lot of gold that transitioned over to Splice, which means that some of their carries are now in a better situation, but still very far behind in terms of gold. I feel like we're 27 minutes in, we haven't really talked about some of the items that are starting to come out for these teams. You've got Seraph's completed, it's a Spellbinder Rise for Humanoid. Uh, once that extra AP and movement speed, you've got Morello and Ludens finished on the side of Caps. The AD carry slash bot lane is where my primary focus is. You've got Black Cleaver, Blade of the Rune King, and the Rapid Fire Cannon on Perks. Perfect hex called the Ludens. It looks like it's going to be a Lich Bane next for Hobby, trying to get that one dig burst out from the Victor. And yes, um, that was that actually reminds me because I was going to talk about it earlier and never had the opportunity to. The um, oh, what's the name? Redemption on the Olaf may surprise some viewers at home. This was actually debuted originally over in the LCK. It's very cheap, but we don't have time. We've got another fight. There's action all over the map. North Scarin gonna feel the front of that redemption. Stand United comes in as well. He's very tanky humanoid, so pushing down towards the bottom lane. Has the teleport if he wants to join the fight. This place might just want to disengage. Caps, look at that flank position. Jumps onto Zarsi, jumps onto North Scarin. Doesn't quite have the damage. Humanoid now teleporting in, but one death from below comes out. Wild ender from Zarsi catches two on the back line. Caps has to jump away, and now humanoid has joined the Barney. Wonder chasing off down towards this bottom side. Perks so low. Caps chased off towards the top side. Splice turn the fight around. They turn it back onto G2. Perks trying to get away, but Humanoid puts him in his place. Splice come out on top. 
and Splice win themselves another team fight. We talked about how G2 had a number of options and they wanted to play 1-3-1 one, one, or look for skirmishes. That started off with G2 trying to get a pick onto Norse Skarin, but it turns into a full-blown 5v5 team fight, which is not the situation that G2 want to find themselves in because Splice have a solid front line, they have a huge amount of crowd control, and they're actually able to come out on top and convert this into another Drake. The goal gap continues to close. Splice look to topple the current top contenders in Europe. 1,600 gold between the two teams, a Mountain Dragon to Splice, and this replay of oh, incredible big plays is brought to you by Alienware. So it actually gets kicked off by Norskare and engage, perhaps trying to protect Kobe. But you can see how much time this four-man unit of Splice actually buys while Humanoid is pushing down towards the bot side of the map. He's just going to secure this tower, then he TPs in quite late. But look at Zerse, he gets so much damage down onto Caps, Yankos, and Perks, and he single-handedly forces all three out of the fight. This then splits up G2, and it allows Humanoid and Vizichachi to just chip away at Wonder, at Perks. And while they don't find those kills onto the three members that he chunked out, ultimately they still win the fight. Humanoid with the patience to wait on that teleport as well was still taking that bombing tower as the fight continued to erupt in the river. They're going to start the Baron off right now. They're going to force one to the TP in. Visitachi doesn't have a CP or ultimate, but Splice, they have to make a decision right now because if they're too slow to react, Wonder is just going to take himself a tower in the bot lane. Noskarin was looking for the flash headbutt pulverize there. They wanted to catch up perks. They knew he didn't have flash. The E can only get you so far, but as you say, they're going to send Chachi off towards the side lane. Stand United, still a little bit of the cooldown left on that alongside the teleport. So now Splice give up priority. They give up pressure. When the bot lane pushes in, someone has to go and catch that wave. And that's exactly what we see from Splice. But this will give time for G2 to set a vision around the Baron area. You can see that they have full control over it right now. So they can just go back to base, pick up a couple more wards. And even if Splice come in and clear out all this vision, they have to invest that vision to get rid of it. And then G2 can then just come back on the map with their freshly stocked wards, their priority that they can build off on the side lanes, and then reclaim it. So Splice in a bit of a tough situation right now as they look to try and get some semblance of control back of the Baron pit. Right, speaking of freshly stocked wards, I'm only seeing three control wards on the side of G2 at the moment. Some of them will be out, of course, but no more in the inventories. Perk still has a full inventory, as does Wonder. So you only really have three people that can put one down at any one time, which does really deny you a lot of the extra vision you could have if every member of your team has a control ward down. I wonder if Caps actually went back to base. I didn't track if he went back as well or if he pushed out top lane, but... I think that's one of the reasons why they're not sitting on the uh, uh, on more control wards. It looks like Perks is just focused on building damage, as he already has his fourth completed item right now. So he's going to be hitting extremely hard. But as well, you can now see that Vizichachi is the one pushing out bots. Someone from G2 has to go and answer. And this will be the window that Splice will try and use to force a play onto G2. And if no one actually goes and answers him, then Chachi will be the one to uh, make his way onto the tower, but one, they're coming down now. This is when Splice need to force something. This is when they need to make a play. A little bit unfortunate timing as Humanoid had just gone back to base. He's got his Rabadon's death cap complete though. Oh, this is unique. Have a look at this. They've actually sent Lucian down as well to try and catch Vizichachi as he's roaming up. And it will force him back, but Splice, they, they need to try and force something right now. This reminds me of G2 of old. I remember at the end of summer, they'd have perks in a side lane and Yankos would come down towards the uh, bottom lane to try and play, even if there was a Baron on the cards. Now, Caps caught out a little bit, but you can't really lock down and block that easily. And so Norskaren will take the brunt of culling to the face. He has to pop his ultimate as well. Caps still on the chase here. Perks decides he doesn't want to go straight into those infernal chains and will back away. But still, both teams eyeing up the Baron. Neither team can really close out the game easily without it, unless they find a pick or a skirmish, which is definitely a priority for G2. So the thing about G2's comp is, because they have no primary tank, uh, it's difficult for them to actually start the Baron and kind of go for an extended trade around it, because the Baron will just kill whoever is tanking it. Which means that they're going to be doing what you're seeing Mickey do right now, which is get this deep vision in, so they can have full information on where Splice is, and then look for picks. Because now, Norskaren has to burn all of his wave clearing tool, or vision clearing tools rather, on his own half of the jungle, meaning that G2 can just maintain pressure in the Baron and the River Pit, which means that Noskarin, he has to walk into darkness and that's how he gets picked off. Jumps on towards Mickey, there's the Sandy Knight, it goes golden, they pop down the Redemption as well, maybe Splice of channel G2 into the area they want. That's the ultimate out from the Shenna, that's what G2 wants, it caps jumps forward, realizes he's facing down four members. Noskarin looks for the flash, couldn't quite connect with it, and now Yankos has the flank in position, Noskarin once again gets the headbutt across, Humanoid standing as that front line, Noskarin needs to get out of here, already he's down, Realm Warp out, gets two away, but G2 have found the pick they wanted. Good utilization of the mobility, 
ability there from G2, just dancing in and out of the range of Splice to not allow them to engage Humanoid. Now gets picked oh, off. He takes a lot of damage to the face there. The Coming, coming out, Perk stepping forward. Humanoid has the flash, but the chase is on, and Perk slays Humanoid. Charging now, trying to run back towards his inhibits towers, but he is not tanky enough by half. Flashes the wall, survives at the moment, but Mickey has the chase, and Perks has the kill. Splice have lost three members incredibly quickly, and G2 are going to look for the win. Yeah, they're not even going for the Baron right now. They still have four members alive. There's a very long death timers in G2. They're just going to try and run it down mid. We've got, basically got double AD carry here with Wonder and with Perks, but they can't fight against Kobe, and Zersi still has a huge amount of damage on him. Is back in, in his back pocket and they will just force him away that's good stuff you have to say from splice after losing those players to defend without losing an inhibitor yeah a lot of hp was burnt uh, or lost rather on the side of g2 and with two big damage dealers in Zerse and Kobe still alive. G2 didn't want to overcommit, especially with the Baron still alive. So don't take that gamble. Disengage. Pick yourself up the Infernal Drake. This is dangerous. Perks jumps across the wall. And this is Infernal Drake. You have to feel to splice. They'll pull it out. Yankos really can't do much about it but unless he wants to flash across the wall. Can't land an axe from that far. Splice get the Baron. Ooh. Oh, oh, wait. Splice get the Infernal. Are they going to do this? Are they going to do this? Uh, so Vizzy Chachi actually has teleport available to him. There's still a lot of vision available to teleport G2. But in. Splice this is the investment. They're just going to force it. One that has TP, though. He hasn't gone back to base yet, I don't think. This is it. This, this is, is it. Splice. This is Splice making the play. We, their coach talked about they weren't decisive enough. This is a very decisive move right now. But teleport. it might pay their downfall. 3,000 HP left on the Baron. Mickey there in the front line, but already the Baron's down. The redemption not right. enough. Zersi gets it now. Splice, can they get out alive? Already one down. They killed Mickey. That's one kill. But Caps gets on the back line. The Humanoid is dead as well. It's all on Kobe to really carry this fight alongside Zersi. Perch is dodging around the side. Caps on the back. He has the flank position. Watch him jump into this fight. You have to feel he's going to make the big play as he goes forward. Not scaring down as well. Splice locked up in the pit. Can they get three? Members away, Chachi jumps away, Caps jumps forward, lands the chain through the Umbral Trespass, but that is the world end of Pop from Zersi. Still has the GA, Caps continuing to go forward. Three Barons still alive. G2 will try and get this inhibitor down in the mid lane. You feel off this push. Uh, they can still chase onto Zersi for the moment, but that will be an inhibitor down. Splice come out with a Baron. Good stuff there from G. Wow. Good stuff for both teams. Yeah, I guess it's good stuff for both teams as well. Like, G2 end up converting it into an inhibitor, but Splice walk away with the Baron, which is the best case scenario for them because now they can just stall for more time. They can rely on the fact that they do actually have a pretty solid 5v5 comp with so many squishy members on the side of G2, and with three core damage dealers on the side of Splice, they can still match these late game fights. Their scaling is still very solid, and so Splice can just buy more time. They can wait and try and... Uh, What's the word? Kind of uh, sit out the storm yep. that is G2. Right Wait now. out the storm. Weather it. Weather it. That's the word I was looking for. That's what they'll try to do. But there's still some good poke coming out from Wonder if it hits onto someone like but Kobe. The, on the thing about the Baron is uh, it makes it that much harder for G2 to split. So it forces them to group, which is the best case scenario for Splice. And we've already seen them win a couple of good fights. But G2 are just leveraging the fact that they're so mobile. They're actually just dashing in, getting a bit of poke, then dashing back out again. They're not hard committing. They're chipping away at Splice. And then once they're low enough, that's when G2 actually look to engage. So Splice need to find that strong commitment in order for them to actually come out on top of these fights. And when Wonder has something like the Edge of Night, it makes it even harder for you to really catch out one of those guys who's stepping forward. Let's have another look at this Baron fight. This Spice made the call to go for it. So Yankos, he was nowhere near to actually come in for the Smite Steel. Uh, Mickey ends up dying very quickly, but Caps trades that back pretty easily. And he, by taking out Humanoid, a lot of the damage ends up going away. And Kobe and Xerxes are stuck in the pit, so they can't follow up behind Vizichachi and Morscaren as well. Caps just zoning on the back end means that North Scarin and Vizichachi just kind of stuck in this awkward situation where let's try and CC him, taunt him, stop Caps from actually killing us. Um, which means that the rest of G2 could then just kill you I, while you're in the I, pit. I was sure Caps was just going to jump on into the pit, but yeah. he didn't need to. It was, it was the implication. Yeah. Well, now G2 grouped up as four, uh, five in this mid lane. Splice doing the same charge. He has a bit of a flank position here. Humanoid actually going to the side lane. It's Splice we see using this split map, using this 1-4, just a little bit more. Xerxes though, pulled back with the Bone Skewer, has to pop the World Ender, still has the GA as well, goes into the Resurrection now. Humanoid not with the team at all, Xerxes trying to dodge away, there's the GA as well. Will G2 commit to this? The Cullen comes out, Yankos pops the Ragnarok, Cap still has the ability to jump forward. They do not find the pick yet, and Splice all get underneath the tower. Humanoid is still in that top lane, he's still pushing the waves in. A couple of Baron buffs are available for those recalls. Norskaren tries to land the knockup onto Caps. Yankos there as well, Norskaren. 
Well, that's a little bit of a bad position for the cow to be in as the Nexus Towers were focused by G2. They can't really get too much out of that. The cow actually survives as well. Norskoyan gets out. Humanoid gets back after taking out a tower. Chachi on the chase has the slow, but Perks has the red buff to keep himself a little bit more healthy. Now, oh, it's just back and forth, Betty. I've just been really impressed with how Splice have been reacting to G2. And while they have been falling behind in a lot of these kills, G2 have just not slowed down when it comes to pressure and fighting. And oh, again, here we go. Splice are now being the proactive ones. Three players go in. The blast going to be knocked onto the wrong side of it. Pulled back. Kobe's down. And now Yankov has a flanking position with the Predator comes in. This is going to be a 4v4 because Caps is not here. Human order very, very low. There's the shield onto him, but a great stun. The knock up. Nikki had a perfect fandom undertow. Chachi tries to flash the wall, but he goes face plants into it. And G2 just wipe off Splice from the map. It was Splice who tried to force the fight. They thought they'd caught out Perks, but an excellent use of the Blast Code converts the fight into G2's favor. They're going to take the win in what was a hard-fought battle. What a game between G2 and Splice. It looked like it could go either way for such a long time, but for one day more, G2 remain undefeated. You said it already in the cast, Medic. G2 fans have got to be pretty happy that even though Caps underperforms, the rest of G2 is able to step up. Perks had a fantastic game on the Lucian. Outside of him dying in the two versus two, uh, he was very solid. 10, 3, and 13 overall in that game. Wonder generated a huge amount of pressure off on the side lane. Yankos was very involved in a lot of the early game playmaking. He stuck to the game plan of trying to gank mid. And then Nikki was constantly looking for roams around the map. And again, the only one you can really criticize this game on the side of G2 is Caps in the mid lane. And, you know, what what does that mean? You know, if you're criticizing Caps, you know, like, oh, you had a you had a six, seven out of ten uh, performance. Had, we had one bad day, <laughs> Caps. Uh, but yeah, it's great stuff for G2 to be able to come out on top after a long fought battle. I think if you're splice, yes, it's a bit it's a bit dismaying to lose the game after it felt for so long that you were in it. But I think they proved in this game that after losing to Schalke yesterday, they're not out of the playoff contention. They're not out of like top four, top three contention. They're still a very strong team. To me, it's why show a lot of really good things. Um, and I just think there are moments where uh, a couple of bad decisions end up snowballing really badly against them, right? Yesterday, we saw a Dragon and a mid-team fight just kind of allow Schalke to snowball the game. And today, we just saw a couple of small plays, a couple of fights that didn't quite go in their favor that really could have swung the game much heavily in the favor of Splice. And I still think they had a very strong showing. I was very impressed with the fact that Kobe and Norskaren were able to find those 2v2 kills down bot. Humanoid, I think, had a really solid performance, surviving a lot of the ganks yeah. that were thrown his way. I love the use of the Shenel and, and Zerse demonstrating once again that he can have impact in the yeah. early game. He can get involved in his lanes and get them ahead, but unfortunately, Splice just couldn't keep up with the amount of pressure that G2 was applying. And I, I used the reference, this is the last time I'm going to use it, but it was very much a matter of who could plug more holes versus who could make more holes. Yeah. And G2 were just too quick at making the holes, and unfortunately, Splice couldn't plug them. I had too many different tools to make those holes as well. I think uh, the highlight of the game for me was that final Mickey play. The Phantom Undertow got a four-man stun in that final fight. His, his pike was actually just exemplary to watch as a support main. I really enjoyed watching it because I think he did an incredible job, as he did yesterday. Yeah, uh, I think Mickey's been a really good player, but uh, overall it was a very exciting game. Wasn't expecting that, especially with so much sentiment and idea around uh, Spice being this much more controlled, articulate team, it, they definitely kind of bought into the chaos today, and I think it was a, a bit of a, a new look for Spice. It was an enjoyable look, and we're going to have another look at it because we will see that final fight again. What a fight it was. Uh, it felt like Kobe maybe went a little bit too far at the start of it. Uh, they took this Realm Warp, and it was a Realm Warp to Doom for Kobe. So you can see the idea behind it. Caps isn't here. Yankos is farming Raptors, and they think they can get this kill, but that hit on the Blast Cone from Perks to separate three members of Splice from Kobe means that they can turn this into a 4v4, and they're stuck in this choke point. So Mickey can get this huge stun off. You can have Perk freely hitting onto all these members, and with the carries dead, it's just easy cleanup, and they don't even need Caps in the fight at all. So who'd have thought that a Blast Cone would swing a fight so MVP. heavily in the favor of That's the thing, team. it was a 6v5 with the Blast Cone. That's, <laughs> that's why it didn't work out. Sometimes everything goes your way. But uh, if you thought Mickey per Perks or Wonder had a standout performance, be sure to vote for them in your Kia Player of the Game votes at Lob Esports on Twitter. If you don't vote for Mickey, I am sad.
with me. <laughs> That's the rule. I definitely think you should vote for Mickey. He had a great performance, but I know they're going to vote for We Blurts. actually agree on who they should vote for. I Blurts. always believe in voting for the support, except for when it's, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, for more on G2 win, G2's win, let's check in with Law and their coach. Thank you very much, Medic, and thank you, Gribes, for joining me. What a game from you guys. Were you expecting this result? We're expecting to win, but um, I'm not too happy with how we won. But in the end, we won, and that's what matters. I mean, we've been used to seeing quick games from you guys. What were you thinking backstage when you saw that Splice was bouncing back and fighting? Um, I thought first that we were inting pretty hard in the early game. Um, kind of like an Excel game. So I had experience with that feeling. Um, I actually did not think with the champs that we had that we had a good chance of coming back, especially with like something um, like Lucian into Victor. Victor was good skating well. So I'm pretty impressed with my team again, like how they managed to problem solve during the game. And yeah. You, you keep winning, but you had a shaky moments yesterday. We saw the same thing today. What are you going to say to the players afterwards about these moments uh, that they should avoid? Not much, honestly, because they know. I mean, they're all smart players in the end, um, even though they don't always show it. And um, it kind of looks like our scrims. Like, so we're like very risky team, very aggressive. And we know full well that at some point will bite us. And today, in like an excellent, it did. Um, so that's just the risk we take. And it's paying off so far, so let's just skip to, uh, skip to this. Last one for you. We talked a lot about G2's performance uh, over the last weeks, but what is missing from other teams to match you right now? That's a hard one, actually. Um, I mean, of course, people will look at the mechanical strength of my players, which, of course, is um, like top on their role in every position. Um, but I think even this aggression has, will, leave us, will leave gaps, but teams are not good at macro enough yet to actually punish that. Um, but I think we also will keep evolve, evolving and that hopefully in the end we will not only play um, full lanes, but that's to show and I don't think teams will touch us in the end of the season. And keep on having those two zero, zero weeks. Thank you for joining me today and congratulations about the games. Thank you. Once again, we're going to take a short break now and when we come back, it's going to be...